Learning English is a big journey. We can improve our English with such a beautiful story. Let's listen to this story. It will improve your English speaking skills significantly. Do you want to improve your English? Do you want to speak English more fluently? You see, the English language changed my life. I was born in Hong Kong, so English is not my first language. My first language is actually Cantonese. My second language is Mandarin because my mother is from Taiwan. I and my third language is English. When first immigrated to North America, I couldn't speak a word of English. I know some of my fans tune into my videos because they want to learn how to speak English. I find that interesting. So today, I want to share with you 5 steps to improve your English fluency. These are the 5 things I did to learn English. Step number 1 to improve your English fluency is actually very simple, and that is, don't give a damn. That's right, don't give a damn. Speak whenever, wherever, and however. It doesn't matter if you speak with an accent. I still speak with an accent, and I talk to tens of millions of people every single month. It doesn't matter. Forget how people might judge you, forget what people might think of you. It doesn't matter, just speak as much as you can. If they don't understand, you say it again. If they don't understand, you say it again. You just keep saying it. I remember because I spoke with such a thick accent, it sounded like Jackie Chan. I can still speak with some Chinese accent like, hey, yeah, this, then that, like that kind of stuff, but you just speak. You just speak as much as you can because that's how you get comfortable. Understand the culture. To understand philosophies, you need to understand the language. When I learned English, I also learned a lot about the culture. About business, of course, that's what I do. So, language is not just something that you use to communicate, language is also something that can train your mind, so understand that. Step 4. Immersion. You have to immerse yourself. When I was learning English, I would listen to music every single day. I would listen to English music. English songs, and try to sing along. It was very difficult, and I was listening to rap music, which was way too difficult, so I gave that up. I was watching English movies without subtitles, and at first, I wouldn't understand. I would understand maybe 5% of it. Then, as my English improved I noticed I would understand the movie more and more. So, you have to immerse yourself. Talk in English, listen to English music, watch English movies, do as much of that as you can, and naturally, you'll pick up the slang, the stories, the phrases. Make it fun. It doesn't have to be studying, make it fun. Talk to people who speak English, interact, connect, read, watch, listen. That's how you get good. That's how I got good. Step number 5 to improve your English fluency is to hang out with people who speak English. I know it sounds obvious, but that's how you do it. In college. I saw Chinese students only hang out with Chinese students, Korean students with Korean students, and Japanese students with Japanese students. I did the opposite. I hung out with people who spoke English. I hung out with Caucasians, people who grew up locally, who spoke perfect English. I would talk and hang out, go to the library. 
and try to talk as much as possible, listen, and ask questions to get comfortable. Another thing I did was get a Korean girlfriend who spoke English. I'm not saying that's the only way, but if you want to learn a new language, hang out with someone who speaks that language, and you'll be shocked at how quickly you pick it up. Let me give you a bonus tip. Step number six, go into a state of overlearning. Let me explain. If you're learning a language and you want to get good quickly, you need to go into a state of overlearning. For example, if you want stronger biceps and you can only lift 20 pounds, train with 25 or 30 pounds. That's overlearning. I did the same with English. I wasn't just learning basic communication, but also at a higher level where there was something at stake, like business. Now, I'm sure you've had moments in your learning where you felt like you progressed very quickly, and it was fun, but at some point, you hit a wall and feel like you'll never speak fluently and confidently. You're not alone. This feeling of being stuck is often called the intermediate plateau. I've been there. It's a comfortable place because you can speak and understand in many situations, but for most of us, it's not enough. We want to enjoy the language as freely as we do our mother tongue K. As a native speaker, I've never had the experience of learning English as a second language. So I want to bring you an expert who has successfully done it. Here at Real Life English, if you listen to our podcast, chances are you have already heard me on there. But today, I'm here to tell you a little bit about my story and how I went from speaking zero English to the level of English I have today. I'm just like you, I'm an English learner myself, and I had to learn English from scratch in my country, Brazil. I've never been abroad, so I'm going to tell you how I did it. And hopefully, that's going to give you some ideas and inspiration for your English journey. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below because every week, we put out videos to help you speak English with confidence and naturally. Now, let's get started. My story with English began when I was 15 years old. As I told you, I come from Brazil, and at that time, I knew zero English. I couldn't speak, read, or write anything in English. But at 15, something magical happened. I started to have this desire to become bilingual. I don't know exactly why, but the idea of using two languages to communicate and express myself was very attractive to me. I also looked around and realized that no one in my social circle knew English. I started to associate knowing English with having a better life. In school, I had a friend who took an English course, and he was really helpful. He lent me his old course books. Every semester, his school would change the books, so he lent me the ones he no longer used. That's how I started by studying with old course books and a grammar book he lent me. I was really fascinated because English was always interesting to me. I actively studied it, reading and copying stuff from the books, and using another language to write and communicate. However, my speaking was really bad at that time. I would try to read out loud from the books, but the words wouldn't flow, and I had no idea how to pronounce many of them. It was frustrating but I kept going. I did this for three years, from 15 to 18. Most of the time, I studied with books. That was the first mistake I made. It took me too long to start speaking. 
Nowadays, we have many more resources, like apps. Speaking of apps, I can tell you about the Real Life English app. With the app, you can have conversations with people from all around the world at the touch of a button. Plus, you can listen to our podcast with transcripts. It's amazing, and I wish I had it when I was learning English 20 years ago. When I turned 18, something magical happened in my life. I started working, and my work experiences were crucial in my English development. Especially my speaking and listening skills. My first job was at a drugstore, where I worked as a cashier. This drugstore was special because my peers quickly noticed me studying English during lunch. I became the English guy at the drugstore, and every time a foreign customer came in, I was the one called to help. These interactions, though small, were incredibly useful. For example, one time, an American customer corrected me when I mispronounced, abroad, these corrections helped me improve. Another significant job was working at a call center, where I spoke to Americans on the phone for six hours a day, six days a week, for a year. This was like my version of living abroad. It was my version of an exchange program, speaking to natives every day. This helped my speaking and listening skills tremendously. I only got that job because I already knew enough English from years of study and practice. My immersion in English became serious. Everything I did was in English watching movies, listening to music, reading. I loved rock and roll and always listened to my favorite bands. With my first paychecks, I bought DVDs to watch movies and series in English. If you want to know my exact step-by-step -step process to improve your English with movies and TV series, let me know in the comments. I can make another video in the future explaining how I did it. Finally, one weird thing that happened in my life was becoming an English teacher. I started teaching English at 21, and I've been doing it for 14 to 15 years now. Teaching English and helping people with their English was an experience that helped me master the language to a whole new level. When you teach, it's like learning again. You have to prepare, study, and find different ways to explain things. This mental process helps you understand the topic better so you can explain it to your students. It's a win-win situation, you revise the information and study it again, and the other person learns new stuff. I've had the pleasure of working with wonderful, more experienced teachers over the years. This experience, along with constant learning and teaching, has helped me master English. Keep learning, keep developing yourself, and look for opportunities to use English daily. Whether through work or interactions, embrace the process and enjoy your journey to fluency. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos to help you speak English confidently and naturally. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos to help you speak English confidently and naturally. Now, let's delve into some more practical steps and personal experiences that might help you on your English learning journey. When I started working at the drugstore, I realized that every interaction was a valuable opportunity to practice my English. I made it a point to initiate conversations with foreign customers. Even if it was just simple greetings or helping them find a product. This constant practice helped me get over the fear of making mistakes. Remember, the more you use the language, the more natural it becomes. 
I also joined English speaking clubs and groups where I could practice speaking with others who were also learning or fluent in English. These social interactions were incredibly beneficial because they allowed me to practice in a more relaxed and informal setting. If you have the opportunity, join such groups or even create one if it doesn't exist in your area. Another crucial step in my journey was embracing the feedback. Whether it came from friends, co-workers, or customers, I welcomed corrections and used them as learning opportunities. It's essential to have a positive attitude towards criticism. Remember, every correction is a step closer to fluency. One of the most effective techniques I used was recording myself speaking English. I would record conversations, practice sessions, or even read aloud from a book. Then, I would listen to the recordings to identify areas where I could improve. This self-assessment helped me fine-tune my pronunciation, intonation, and fluency. Watching English movies and TV shows was another significant part of my learning process. I would watch them with subtitles initially and then without, trying to understand the dialogues and mimic the actor's speech patterns. Shows with natural conversational English were particularly helpful. I often paused and repeated phrases to practice pronunciation and intonation. Listening to English music and podcasts also played a crucial role. Songs and podcasts are a great way to get used to different accents, slang, and colloquial expressions. I would sing along to songs and mimic the speakers in podcasts. This not only improved my listening skills but also my pronunciation and vocabulary. Reading was another habit that greatly contributed to my English skills. I started with children's books and gradually moved on to more complex texts like novels, newspapers, and academic journals. Reading expanded my vocabulary and helped me understand different sentence structures and writing styles. I made it a point to read something in English every day. One piece of advice I always give is to keep a vocabulary journal. Whenever you come across a new word or phrase, write it down along with its meaning and an example sentence. Review your journal regularly to reinforce your learning. This practice helps you actively use new vocabulary in your conversations and writing. Engaging in online forums and social media in English is another effective way to practice. Platforms like Reddit, Quora, and English learning communities provide opportunities to interact with native speakers and other learners. You can ask questions, share your thoughts, and get feedback on your language use. Lastly, Having a mentor or a language partner can significantly boost your learning. Find someone who is fluent in English and willing to practice with you regularly. They can provide guidance, correct your mistakes, and help you stay motivated. Remember, learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. It takes time, effort, and patience. Celebrate your progress no matter how small, and keep pushing forward. You are capable of achieving fluency. Thank you for joining me today. I hope my story and these tips inspire and help you on your English learning journey. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. As I continued my journey of learning English, I began to realize that immersing myself in the language was crucial. This immersion wasn't just about watching movies or listening to music, it was about integrating English into every part of my daily life. 
One technique that greatly helped me was changing the language settings on all my devices to English. My phone, computer, and even my social media accounts were all set to English. This constant exposure helped me get used to the language in everyday contexts and learn new vocabulary naturally. I also made it a point to think in English. Initially, it was challenging because my thoughts would naturally occur in my native language. But with practice, I started thinking about daily activities, making plans, and even daydreaming in English. This mental shift was a game changer because it made English a part of my internal dialogue, helping me become more fluent and spontaneous in my speech. Engaging in conversations with native speakers was another significant milestone. At first, it was intimidating, but I soon realized that most people are patient and understanding when they know you're learning. I joined language exchange programs where I could practice English with native speakers in exchange for teaching them my native language. This mutual learning environment was beneficial and made the practice sessions more enjoyable. Traveling, although not always feasible, can provide an excellent opportunity for immersion. Even short trips to English-speaking countries can expose you to different accents, dialects, and cultural nuances. If traveling is not an option, virtual travel through documentaries, virtual tours, and travel blogs can also be effective. Writing in English was another area I focused on. I started by keeping a daily journal where I wrote about my day, my thoughts, and my feelings. This practice helped me improve my writing skills and allowed me to express myself better in English. I also in participated in online writing communities and forums where I could share my writings and get feedback from native speakers. Another tip that I found incredibly useful was learning idiomatic expressions and slang. These are often not taught in traditional language courses but are essential for sounding natural and understanding casual conversations. Watching sitcoms, stand-up comedies, and reality shows helped me pick up these expressions. I made a habit of noting them down and using them in my conversations. In addition to informal language, I realized the importance of understanding and using professional and academic English. This was especially important for my career. I started reading industry-specific articles, research papers, and attending webinars and conferences conducted in English. This exposure not only improved my language skills but also kept me updated with the latest trends and developments in my field. Public speaking was another area I worked on. Initially, speaking in front of a crowd was daunting, but I joined the local Toastmasters club, which provided a supportive environment to practice public speaking. Preparing and delivering speeches in English helped me gain confidence and improve my ability to articulate thoughts clearly and concisely. Teaching English, as I mentioned earlier, was a turning point in my language learning journey. Explaining concepts, grammar rules, and vocabulary to students reinforced my own understanding and mastery of the language. It also taught me patience and empathy, as I could relate to the struggles of my students. Teaching is indeed a two-way street where both the teacher and the students learn from each other. Consistency and persistence are key when learning a language. There were times when I felt demotivated and frustrated, especially when I hit plateaus in my learning. During these times, I reminded myself why I started learning English in the first place. 
I also set small, achievable goals and celebrated each milestone, no matter how small. These little victories kept me motivated and moving forward. Finding a community of fellow learners was another source of motivation. Being part of a community where everyone is working towards the same goal creates a sense of camaraderie and support. We shared resources, study tips, and encouraged each other. This sense of belonging and shared purpose made the journey less lonely and more enjoyable. One of the most important lessons I learned was to embrace mistakes. Making mistakes is a natural part of the learning process. Instead of being embarrassed or discouraged, I viewed mistakes as learning opportunities. Each mistake was a step towards improvement. This mindset shift made a significant difference in my confidence and progress. I also experimented with different learning methods to find what worked best for me. Some people learn best through visual aids, while others prefer auditory or kinesthetic methods. I discovered that a combination of reading, writing, listening, and speaking worked best for me. Using a variety of resources and methods kept the learning process interesting and effective. Setting specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound, smart, goals helped me stay focused and track my progress. For example, instead of a vague goal like, improve my vocabulary, I set specific goals like, learn and use 10 new words each week. These concrete goals gave me a clear direction and a sense of accomplishment as I achieved them. Incorporating English into my hobbies and interests made learning more enjoyable. I love cooking, so I started watching cooking shows and reading recipes in English. I also enjoy sports, so I followed English-speaking sports channels and read sports articles. Connecting language learning with my passions made it feel less like a chore and more like a fun activity. Practicing mindfulness and relaxation techniques helped me manage the stress and frustration that sometimes come with learning a new language. Techniques like deep breathing, meditation, and positive visualization helped me stay calm and focused, especially during challenging moments. Learning about the culture associated with the English language was also enriching. Understanding cultural references, humor, traditions, and etiquette gave me deeper insights into the language and made my interactions more meaningful. It also fostered a greater appreciation and respect for the diversity within English-speaking communities. Using technology to aid my learning was a game-changer. Language learning apps, online courses, and virtual reality experiences provided interactive and engaging ways to practice English. These tools offered flexibility and convenience, allowing me to learn anytime and anywhere. Reading extensively in English was another practice that significantly improved my language skills. I explored various genres, from fiction and non-fiction to poetry and technical writing. This not only expanded my vocabulary but also exposed me to different writing styles and perspectives. Book clubs and reading groups were great for discussing what I read and gaining deeper insights. Developing a routine was crucial for consistent progress. I dedicated specific times each day to different aspects of language learning. For example, mornings were for reading and writing, afternoons for listening and speaking practice, and evenings for watching English shows or interacting with language partners. This structured approach ensured balanced and comprehensive learning. Engaging 